So this question comes from Olga. Is it a good idea to start my work in the IT field from self-employment and self-study everything I need to know, like programming languages? I'm a 27-year-old female. Computers have always been my hobby, but I'm a master of arts, so I don't have any qualifications in this field. I can say that I'm quite computer savvy, and I know HTML, CSS, and have a good knowledge of operation of computers. However, I'm no specialist, at, at least not yet. Two years ago, I dropped my job to pursue my dream and started creating websites. I now have two websites and uh, some income from AdSense and Amazon affiliate program. If the numbers keep rising, I will soon be able to sustain myself from these websites. I always wanted to be an independent entrepreneur, not an employee. Uh, employee. Uh, is it a good idea to stay on my own and learn all I need to learn, or should I start more traditional way, e.g. a degree, look for, uh, look for my first job, and then think about self-employment? I'm almost 28, I live in Eastern Europe, and I need to have income, and I cannot really go to university again right now, but I cannot imagine myself in any other field than IT. Thank you for answering. So this is one of those questions that come up a lot. You know, a lot of people think about it and they're like, wow, you know, I want to go out and be a consultant. I want to start my own business. But, but Eli, I don't have the qualifications. I don't have the certifications. I'm not like you. I don't have any experience going out there. You know, uh, maybe I just need to go to college. Maybe I just need to get the crappy job and work my way up. And here's the deal. It really depends all upon you. It is absolutely and utterly unnecessary. Now, if you listen to me whenever I talk about things like certifications, whenever I talk about things like degrees, all that kind of stuff, the number one reason that you get uh, certifications and degrees and all that is for the human resources person. It's not actually to do your job. It's not actually to impress your manager. It's not actually to impress the clients. Basically, you get degrees and certifications and all that simply to get through the gatekeeper, that human resources uh, manager, that hiring person uh, that will basically uh, get you down the road to get a job. That's why you get degrees, certifications. I can tell you, honestly, I swear to you, I have all of these certifications. I've gone through a stupid amount of training, right? Just a stupid amount of training in the tech, tech world. And I can tell you, none of my clients ever asked about any of it. I swear, like all of you guys are worried. You're like, oh, I don't know about my resume. Literally, my cl my clients didn't even know. Like, um, I even dropped at one point my whole MCSE MCP plus I off of my business card uh, because 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 no nobody even knew what it was. They were like, ooh, look, you've got letters. I was like, um, do you know what those letters are? They said, no, but. But I know you have letters. <laughs> that, that, that was actually a quote from one of my clients. He said, you know, I looked and you had letters. That's good enough for me. I'm like, you don't even know what those letters are. <laughs> You don't know about if it was an A plus or a CCIE. Literally, to the client's eyeball, didn't matter. Hey, there's letters behind your name, right? It was completely ridiculous. But that's how it is. If you go out there uh, to be a consultant, to be your own small business person, all all your clients care about is do you do the job you are hired for? If you do the job you are hired for, you're A-OK, -okay, they will love you, they will promote you, they'll tell all your friends about you, so on and so forth. If you don't do what you say, then it's all bad and everything gets nasty real quick. So what I would tell you, to be honest with you, if you've already done the degree program and if you've already built your own two websites, what you should do is you should go out there, you should knock on doors or talk to friends, talk to business owners, and see a about building websites for them. And again, the biggest thing in the world, and this is one of those things I try to try to get into your guys' heads, but a lot of times it doesn't stick for some reason, is under promise, over deliver. Under promise, over deliver. Under promise, over deliver, right? So when you walk in there, ask the client what they need, ask the potential client what they need, and if it is above your skill set, you know, if this is like a Ruby on Rails project, or if you, if, you, if you look at what they're talking about and you have no idea how the hell you're gonna build that thing, walk away. The best thing that you can do in that situation is just walk the hell away. Because if you take a project that you cannot fulfill, then you are going to screw your reputation. People are gonna be pissed at you, it's gonna be all bad, right? So if all you know is HTML, and CSS, that's fine, that's fine, that, that really is okay. So you go and you start talking to people and you start seeing about basically be building flat websites for them, you know, websites with an about page, a contact page, a services page, and you know, whatever the hell else page, right? You can build that in HTML and CSS with, you know, whatever graphics programs or whatever. And what you do is you build one and then you build another one. And what's gonna happen is like on the second or third one that you build, what you're gonna start to think is like, man, you know what would look really good here? What would look really good on this page is if I had a drop-down menu. 
darn, how can I put a drop down menu on this page? And then you're going to Google drop down menus, and you're going to find out like the drop down menu generally is using JavaScript. And you're going to go, wow, so JavaScript helps me create these more dynamic websites. Well, I'm going to start to learn, learn JavaScript, right? So on that third, on that third website, you're going to put some drop down menus. Right, and then like the fourth website, you're gonna be like, "Wow, I just learned some of that JavaScript stuff." You know what? Rollover images. I bet right here, like rollover images or transition images would look pretty good. And I just learned that from JavaScript. And so you're gonna start putting JavaScript in, and then you're gonna keep going. You're gonna, and then somebody's gonna ask you, and they're like, "Yeah, you know, I really wish I could take email addresses from people. Is there any way to do that?" And you're gonna say, "You know what? I'm not sure if I can do that. I'm not sure if I can do that." But let me let me go. Let me research a little bit. I'll, I'll contact you in a day or two. And then you're gonna go back, and you're gonna like, "Huh? How can I pull?" Get, get email addresses from people. And then you're gonna you're gonna go and you're gonna search, you know, get people's addresses or whatever. And you're gonna find out all you have to do is create a little HTML form uh, that connects to a little PHP script that dumps email addresses into a text file or into a database or something like that. And you're gonna go, wow, fuck, that's easy. And then you're gonna go back to them and you're gonna say, you know what? For $200, for $200, I am gonna give you this little widget on your website that will drop all those email addresses into a beautiful text file for you. I know that that's completely horrible from a security standpoint, but we're not going to security standpoint right now, uh, right? Oh, wow. And then you're gonna build, 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 and then that is how you go. Because that, that's one of the, the great things about learning while you work, learning while you actually do your profession, is you learn the right things. Uh, you know, that's what pains me so much with so many of these boot camps or a lot of these college degree programs you guys go through, is you just learn so much crap you will never use in your entire life. You know, the, the, the best example that I can give is trust relationships for me. I have spent so much of my life learning about fucking trust relationships in Microsoft Windows servers and, and, uh, uh, right? Uh, <laughs> there was an entire test back for Windows NT 4.0, it was enterprise server, and you, it, it was like so much of these, these, tr these transitive trust relationships, right? <sighs> Don't worry about it. All right, kind of complicated to figure out. It takes a lot of brain power to figure out. And in the real world, I have never in my life actually dealt with trust relationships. I've probably been in environments that have had trust relationships, but for me, the computer guy, it hasn't mattered. Again, it's one of those things. It works on the back end. It works on the infrastructure. I don't actually see it. I don't. I don't work on it. If I thought about it, I might go, oh, look. My, my user account has a whatever trust relationship with this domain, but, but that's about it. But I spent all, all that effort, or you know, I, I spent all the effort on that or like with protocol. So back in the day when, um, when uh, I got my MCSE for 4.0, one of the tests, one of the tests I actually took was for T TCP IP4. Like literally, that was how cool and impressive it was back in like 2000. Like, ooh, you could put that on your resume back then. I know TCP IP4. People were like, wow. Um, and so the thing was, it was during a transition period. So there was NetBuoy, and there was IPX SPX, and there was um, NW Link, and there was Apple Talk, and there was all these other protocols out there. Uh, it all ended up simply everybody going over to TCP IP generally. But back then, there were all these different protocols. Well, the issue was, is all those other, other protocols were basically dying. Like, when I, when I took the test, when I took the TCP IP4 test, uh, everybody had essentially standardized on TCP IP4, and everything else was, was it was kind of like obsolete walking. It didn't matter. I still had to study that. I still had to, I still had to use so much brain power to learn all this crap. I have never in my life actually, used, not even come close to using. Not like, not like I sat at the table and the boss was thinking about giving me a project and then gave it to somebody else. Like, nah, it didn't even come close, right? And so that's a problem you get to with, with modern education is you learn all this crap. It doesn't matter, right? What's cool, especially if you're doing something like web design, is you get to learn uh, what you actually, in fact, need to know. So if you're sitting there, and that's the thing, like if you're gonna do web design, is people build websites differently. Uh, a website is not a website, you know, they're, they're all different. A web designer, you know, there's a zillion different web designers out there, and they all have different philosophies on how they build websites and what they wanna do. Some web designers want uh, websites uh, to be very, very pretty, very beautiful, you know, something that would win awards for art, you know, uh, basically 
immediately you look at it and you're like, wow, this is cutting edge. This is this is this is really great. Uh, you have other ones that um, basically uh, people who create cookie cutter of whatever is currently trending. So you see this a lot, especially in the startup world, where like all the startup companies basically have the same damn website with the same damn font, just like a little bit different colors and a little different pictures. But if you look at them, you're like. Didn't I just see this website like 30 seconds ago somewhere else, right? And uh, I mean, they're all built differently. They're all hand built, but 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 those people have decided, you know, the current, the trendy font is this. The trendy colors is this. This is how this should look, right? And so that that's one way of doing it. People like me, who are not the best artists in the world, just like brutal, nasty functionality, right? If you go to any of my websites, you'll know how to use them, um, and you're probably going to laugh about how ugly they are. Just how it is. Like, you go to EliTheComputerGuy.com, the first thing people do is they laugh at it. But I will tell you, everybody knows how to use it. There's, no, there's not a lot of question. It's like, yep, that's, that's how it gets used, right? So there's all these different ways to design, and, and based on how you want to design, um, will the, the things that you need to know will be different. So if somebody wants highly interactive websites, you know, things that are, um, um, you know, again, like pretty and flashy and will do all these wacky things, uh, they probably want to learn a lot, a lot about JavaScript. So JavaScript is, is its own full uh, programming language. There's something called motion JavaScript out there. Um, there's other versions, but basically saying, uh, where it, it, it's like an open source alternative to Flash. So all, more or less, all the things you can do in Flash, you can actually do in JavaScript. What why it's important that you can do it in JavaScript is because it's uh, all all browsers support it. So everything from Chrome to Internet Explorer to to you know Mac or, or iOS, um, you, you so you can have all this weird fancy stuff going on, right? So that there you might use something like JavaScript and the Motion Java or whatever versions of JavaScript they're out there, um, or you may want something that tosses a lot of data back and forth. You may decide you know what the way that I'm going to make a lot of money is I'm going to create these highly uh, utilitarian websites uh, that allow users to push and pull data and then you would learn like MySQL and PHP. You go down that route. Uh, you may you may do something else. You may uh, decide to be something like a front end developer or whatever, and decide you're just really gonna hammer home, you know, the CSS and some of these other uh, languages. Uh, but the important thing to understand there is those. I mean. PHP is a full, I mean, I know PHP programmers, essentially, more or less, all they do is PHP. I know JavaScript programmers, more or less, all they do is JavaScript. You know, Ruby programmers, more or less, all they do is Ruby. These are full-fledged programming languages that do their own kind of things. And so, depending on where you decide to push your career uh, or, or your, your, your company, you'll, you'll decide which of those is more or less valuable. For you, I can't tell you if PHP or JavaScript or Ruby is more valuable. One of them is going to be very valuable to you. It kind of depends on what you decide to do. Uh, so that is what I would say, Is it, especially if you already have your own websites up. Go out there, start knocking on doors, start building websites, and away you go. You don't you don't need any qualifications. You don't need any certifications to build websites. The nice thing too is that they don't even really exist. To be honest with you, um, I looked into this in the past, and there's no real good. There's no cert certifications I would even trust. It's not like like in the IT world, uh, information technology world. You know, there's the MCSE and there's the CCNA and there's the CCIE and there's a Red Hat certified. There's a lot of certifications over in the IT world. In the programming world, the web development world, there just aren't. Uh, the, the certifications that do exist um, simply exist because people like pieces of paper, but they're not trusted, they're not respected, they're not liked by anybody, maybe other than bureaucrats. They kind of just exist to exist type of deal. Uh, so yeah, you can definitely just go out there, you can start knocking on doors, you can start talking with people, uh, build what you can, and keep learning 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 and keep learning, and what you'll find out is in three years, you will end up with your special skill set, whatever that happens to be. Uh, if you do that, you will be successful and you'll be happy, so on and so forth. Just go out there and knock on, door, knock on every single door. The biggest thing that you want to do right now is you want to build your portfolio. The more websites you have built, the better. When somebody comes to you and they say, how many websites have you built? And you can say 20. That makes them just feel more comfortable. If you've built 20 websites for different companies, they go, okay, well, this, this person may still be new, but they probably know what they're doing. If you say two, they're going to be like, eh.
So um, the other thing that you can do when you're knocking on doors and talking to people, I don't recommend this long term. I don't recommend this long term. So once you've done 10 websites, stop doing this. But in the beginning, when you're trying to build that portfolio, one of the things you can do, one of the things I did way back in the day, way back in the day, in the very beginning, not very long, but in the very beginning, was the whole satisfaction guarantee thing, right? So you build a website for them. They only pay if they like it. Like basically pay on delivery. So you can go to them and you can say, I won't take a deposit. I won't take any of that. I will build this website for you. I will show you the website. If it is a website that you like and the website that you want, at that point, you pay me. If you don't like it, you don't pay me and I walk away, right? That makes them feel more kind. There's no loss for them. So you walk up to them and you, you don't have a big portfolio. They're like, man, I don't want to drop $500 on something I don't even know what it's going to look like. So you go, don't, don't. I will build right now, right now, special offer, special offer for the first 10 clients. Um, I will build it for you. If you like it, pay for it. If you don't, no worries. So, um, so that would be my thought there. That would be my thought there. But yeah, yeah 